Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's review, we're going to be taking an extremely early look at the brand new Wave 3 Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Ironhide. This figure literally dropped out of nowhere and was first spotted at Singapore retail. For a while, this figure was a complete mystery. No one knew whether or not he was actually going to come out and there, is, there have still been no official announcements as of yet for this character. As always, we're gonna take a quick look at the packaging, bringing the packaging in for a closer look. As you can see, we've got a very cool image of Ironhide there from the first movie, Autobot Ironhide. Here's figure number 14. The side of the packaging has another really cool CGI render of Ironhide as he appeared in the 2007 Transformers movie. The back of the packaging showcases Ironhide in both his robot mode, his vehicle mode, states that he transforms into 27 steps, as well as some of the other voyages in the assortment. Quite surprised that they don't include any of the upcoming releases, seeing as this is wave 3, it would have been cool to maybe see what other figures are coming down the line. The other side of the packaging just has a closer image of Ironhide and it states that he's from the Studio Series. Now with all of these Studio Series figures, he does come with a backdrop. Once again, it is exactly the same as the backdrop that came with Starscream, Jazz, Ratchet. So it has been recycled quite a few times. Would have been nice if they would have included a brand new backdrop, perhaps a different scene from Mission City. However, it's still nice nonetheless and does suit the character. Now, bringing the figure in for a closer look, I must say the details on this figure are really good, especially the head sculpt of Ironhide. As you can see, his head sculpt has been detailed immaculately. You've got that very abstract design for Ironhide with lots of silver highlights, picking out some of the sharper details of the figure's face. You can see the mouth plate has been detailed impeccably well. You've got the very different looking eyes on either side of his face, very alien-esque. You've got a really cool, cool detailed torso section this section here is really cool. One thing that does bum me out a bit about this figure is this bumper section. It would have been cool if it could have rotated back a tad further. However, nonetheless, in hand, it's nowhere near as noticeable as I originally thought it was going to be. His arm cannons have too been detailed fantastically. As you can see, they've got lots of sculpting and detailing. And the nozzle of this one has been picked out in a silver paint application. The other arm cannon has more silver. And you've got some silver and then grey plastic brakes which really does help to break up the sculpt and pick out some of the finer details with a black nozzle for the cannon. Really good looking set of weaponry. Moving down to the legs, as you can see, you've got loads of sculpting and detailing. You do have some faux tires, just bringing them in. You can see that they're there. The real tires are actually at the bottom of the feet. However, in person, it doesn't look too bad whatsoever. I do wish that there were some more silver highlights on the legs. They do kind of just get washed out with this black plastic. It's kind of a glossy black plastic nonetheless and still looks fairly decent. That's how the back of him looks. He cleans up fairly nicely. You do have to push this section in. It will come untabbed now and again, but he does clean up reasonably well and there's not a lot of back kibble on the figure at all. So overall for details, this figure is really, really well done. Now turning to articulation, that's definitely where some of the more limitations come into play. The head is extremely limited. You can get him to look left and right barely. He cannot look up that far nor down. So the ball joint is extremely restrictive and it can nod side to side very limitly. The shoulders, however, are actually really cool in terms of their design. Now you can swivel them forwards and backwards. They do also go in and out and they do have quite a big role to play in the transformation. However, we'll get to that in the transformation segment. It does have a rotation just above the elbow. He has a 90 degree bend at the elbow as well as wrist articulation, which once again is really nice to see on a Voyager class figure. Unfortunately, there is no waist articulation and I don't think it could have been integrated due to the way that this back assembly collapses. It would have definitely had interfered with some of those joints and restricted it. The legs can kick forwards quite high and backwards too quite high. They can split all the way. However, as you can see, the joints are fairly loose. So I wouldn't recommend keep doing that. It's a little bit more tighter on this one. I imagine you could just take this screw, tighten it up, and then that issue would be resolved. There is fire rotation just below the leg joint, and the knees can bend 90 degrees. Quite a wide range of articulation for the knee. That's quite surprising on a bulky figure. And finally, there is no ankle pivot. However, due to transformation, you can get the feet to pivot forwards and not backwards. So overall for articulation, he has all the necessary points to make him look like Ironhide and pull off some of those cannon poses. However, he's not the most dynamic of the Studio Series toy line. 
Now turning to some size comparisons, here is the Studio Series Ironhide next to the rest of the team from the 2007 movie. Here we have the rest of the Studio assortment, we've got Optimus Prime, Ratchet, Jazz and Bumblebee, and I think that they all scale really well, especially the scale between Optimus and Ratchet. I think that they scale really well with Ironhide. Ironhide is slightly taller than Ratchet and is slightly shorter than Prime. Now whilst he is a fairly small Voyager, he is quite bulky and is very well made. All the joints feel very solid and the plastic is very thick. So despite his shorter size, I definitely think he makes up with it in terms of his width, his bulk and his overall plastic heft. For another comparison, here is Studio Series Ironhide next to the last Voyager Ironhide figure to be released, that being the Dark Moon version. As you can see, the brand new Studio Series figure, whilst being smaller, is definitely a lot more bulkier. This Ironhide had very slender legs and very slender arms and was overall just a very skinny figure, not capturing what Ironhide looked at all like in the movie. This figure I think pulls off so much better. It's definitely a lot more of a squat, heavily looking built character and that does definitely fit the overall appearance of Ironhide exceptionally well. So overall, I definitely think that this new Studio Series Ironhide is a massive upgrade from this Dark of the Moon Voyage. Now, as mentioned earlier, the cannons can be detached as you can see, they are entirely removable. They're not integrated into the transformation or anything. They do just simply peg off by this little peg here, and then they will port onto Ironhide that peg there, and they will just peg onto Ironhide's forearm just like that, thus masking up this piece of car kibble. Same goes for the other side. As you can see, they have been detailed exceptionally well and do definitely capture the overall appearance of Ironhide's cannons in the first two movies. Now, I did think that perhaps they could combine However, as of yet, I haven't found any ways for these to combine whatsoever. They do have some obscure ports, so maybe that they can combine some way. I thought perhaps that this slot would plug into there, but I don't think it can. Oh, it can. It can actually plug, so you can combine the weapons. That's actually quite a nice touch. As you can see, the weapons do combine just like that, if you want the weapons to look slightly larger. Now, one thing to note about this figure, which was an extreme eyesore when I first saw leaked pictures, was this whole hip section. Upon looking at photographs, I thought that it looked extremely slim and just really overly all detracted from the look of Ironhide. However, I am proud to announce that in person, it actually isn't that noticeable, especially when you split the legs. It is still quite a slender piece. However, when, with the legs bulked up and the torso bulked up, it really isn't that noticeable and doesn't detract too much from the figure. Now, turning to the transformation, first of all, you want to detach the cannons. They are on fairly securely, so it can be a pain to just pop off, just give them a wiggle and they will just detach. The first step that you want to carry out on the figure is folding these sections inward. They just collapse all the way up, just like that. You then want to come around to the back and detach these sections in robot mode. This tab here does plug into this section here. So you just want to untab that and straighten that all the way out. You then want to come to the back of the figure and take this whole back section and just pull it all the way backwards then you can then pull out his windshield all the way like that. Now we come to my favorite part of the transformation, the segment with the arms. Now what you want to do here is, as you can see, there is like a slight groove section in there that will actually line up with this piece here. So you just want to take it and push it together like that and then collapse and you will hear a soft tab. So essentially what you want to do is take this whole section, tab it in and line it up like that. You then want to rotate the figure around and pull this section out just like that. That will then allow you to take the whole head section and just push it backwards like that. You may want to take these and just move them out of the way just a tad so that it gives you some more clearance because you're going to want to push the head quite far back. You are then going to want to come to the front of the figure once again and line these pieces up. Now in order to do this it does take quite a lot of maneuvering. You do want to just keep wiggling these pieces until eventually they do come over the top and you're gonna want to try and get this section under here because this will actually slide up. Tab that in, make sure this tab's on tab like that, line it up and there you've got the front bumper section of Ironhide all lined up like so. With that now complete you can then proceed to take the head and push it forwards. Now it's up to you now whether you rotate the head around. I personally just decide to leave it like that. If you rotate it around, it's not as obtrusive when in the vehicle mode. You won't be able to see his face peering out of the windshield. However, it is just personal preference. Coming back to the back, to the side of the figure, you now want to lift these arms up all the way like that. 
and then you kind of want to bend this section like that and pull it up just like that so that when you tab these in it will all line up really smoothly repeat the same process on this side with that step now complete you want to actually detach this whole torso section just take it and pull it apart like that and then you want to rotate it all the way around until these sections here on the arms these it's trying to get some luck these slots here and here will line up will line up with these tabs here so you just want to push it all the way in until they line up like that with that now complete you can take this whole windshield section and just collapse it down you will have to make sure that the windows line up appropriately with that section now completed you then want to take these sections here and pull them out just like that so just take this section here and pull it outwards you then want to take the wheels from the under the feet and just clip them out just like that you then want to you know want to move this section backwards like that that will just allow for some extra clearance and collapse the feet in just like that upon themselves just like that and now you're going to want to take these tabs here and they will plug into some slots down here just like so you're then going to want to take these and tab them together and lift this whole section up like that now the second to last step is taking this section here and actually lining it up now as you can see you do have like a circular piece there this peg here will actually plug into that and then this peg here this tab here will go into this section here so you just want to grab that and try and line it all up just like so come around to the other side and repeat the exact same process just like that and then the final step is to just lift the bumper section up and there you have Ironhide in his completed GMC top kick alt mode now even in vehicle mode this really captures how Ironhide appeared in the first movie bringing it in for a closer look as you can see on the front of the vehicle you have the trademark GMC logo road armor on the bumper got some headlights picked out in a yellowish type of paint got some detailing on the bumper section the lights at the top of the vehicle have two been painted and the smokestacks have been picked out in a silver paint you have got the 4x4 logo on either side of the truck as well as some red painted tail lights with the Autobot insignia so overall they have definitely recreated Ironhide's appearance from that first movie exceptionally well now as with all vehicles he does roll fairly well I do think he'd probably roll better on a slightly rougher surface in terms of weapon storage as you can see there are some tabs on the back section which accommodate these pegs on the guns simply just peg them in just like that as with you do with most Ironhides just store the weapons on the back and that works reasonably well so overall for truck mode it's a very cool representation of the GMC top kick for your studio series size comparisons here is Ironhide with the rest of the core Autobot team here we have Ironhide next to the studio series Jazz studio series Ratchet and the studio series Bumblebee I think he works well with some of the smaller vehicles however with Optimus I think he's slightly too big as you can see he is towering over Prime and he's just a bigger truck in width and height. Overall, I think that Studio Series Ironhide is a very much welcome addition to the Studio Series collection. If you've been collecting the Studio Series and you have the core team of Autobots, then there is no way that you can skip out on this Ironhide figure. It is nowhere near a bad figure. It's probably one of the more weaker voyages from this line. I definitely don't think that it is as good as Brawl or Megatron, but nonetheless, it's still a very, very well done Voyager. And perhaps if Hasbro or Takaratomi had eliminated the bumper section and made the figure more poseable in his robot mode, I definitely think that would have bumped him up the ranks, making him a far superior Voyager than the rest. I think the head sculpt is absolutely exceptional. It captures movie Ironhide perfectly. The additions of the cannons are just fantastic and they are Ironhide's trademark weapons. So for them to get them spawn is a really important feature on the figure. I think the feet look really cool and definitely do look very movie accurate. The transformation is quite fun. It's actually the most fun I've had on one of these Studio Series figures. And I think the truck mode works fine for a regular GMC Top Kick Voyager class truck. Definitely scales very nicely with the rest of the Studio Series Autobots, both in robot mode and vehicle mode. So overall, it's a very satisfying purchase. And I do highly recommend this Studio Series Ironhide. Hope that you enjoyed this review. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.